Hey YouTube, it's Josiah Blodge at Sports, and man oh man, this is not a rant video, but I've been waiting to talk about this for years. It has been three years since the San Diego Chargers moved to Los Angeles, and even at the time I was like baffled that that would happen because that felt worse than like the St. Louis Rams going to LA, but this didn't feel right. After 56 seasons in San Diego, you decided to bolt. But as I watched videos, I watched two videos. One is the San Diego Super Haters, which the link to the video is down below, and uh, Set the Edges video about the San Diego Chargers. That link is down in below in the description. But let me tell you how I felt about that. Back in the mid-10s, you know, I was in college, and I heard rumors that the Chargers were leaving San Diego. And I was like, what? Like, it just didn't feel real. And I had a friend named Kiko. He was from San Diego. And I told him the Chargers may be leaving. And it felt weird to me because San Diego without the Chargers is just wrong, you know? They love their team. They love the NFL. But the ownership said otherwise. And let me tell you about the ownership in a minute in this video. But just, you know, in 2016, after the Rams left, they were seated thinking t for St. Louis to go to L.A. Either the Chargers or Raiders were going to join them. But, you know, since, like, the politics of NFL ownership is weird because since, like, you know, like, the Raiders back in 2014 wanted to move to San Antonio, but Jerry Jones and the Adams family, the people who own the Texans, blocked that, which is kind of weird. I more think it's Jerry Jones' ego, but they blocked that move from San Antonio. And then he wanted to move to L.A., but the thing is... Kroenke in his new stadium didn't want the Rams to be a second tenant in his own place because the Raiders were more popular. Guaranteed, I don't know what Raider fan is like in LA. I know that some of, because they won their first Super Bowl in LA. Some of those Raider fans I think are real fans. Some of them are bandwagoners, but I digress. But like a lot of the owners and even the commissioner thought that they were going to get something figured out in San Diego. And Dean Spanos is such an idiot and the other owners view him as an idiot. Or some of the owners, even as a little brother, were saying, oh, Dino, that's what they call him. We're, we're going to get you. We're going to help you, man. You know, you've been requesting a stadium for years and years and years. And we're going to help you. Because Qualcomm was really old. And in that Super Haters video I saw about the Chargers, their scoreboard was from the freaking 80s. The 80s? Like, oh, my gosh. And I Googled images of that. And I'm like, you couldn't update a freaking scoreboard? And the Spanos family, compared to, like, the Eagles owner, Jeffrey Lurie, compared to Rob Kraft, even compared to Jerry Jones, are not that wealthy. If I'm going to go on my phone right now and Google it, their net worth is something along... Let me just Google this real quick. Just bear with me, guys. Yeah, just bear with me. Because this is insane. Yeah, because Alex Spanos bought the team in 1984. <laughs> and my goodness. They're, the Spanos family's net worth is $2.4 And Jeffrey Lurie's net worth, if you compare it to his net worth, is $2.7 So they weren't really that wealthy. They're wealthy to you and me, but to like... The other owners, they're, they're like not wealthy because Alex Spanos was a, a slang term that these fans in San Diego called him was a slumlord from Stockton who, you know, he built houses and he made snacks for migrant workers back in the 50s. But he was a slumlord from Stockton and, you know, that they said like that family took a San Diego tradition and crapped all over it. And I was, when I first heard this, I was like, oh my gosh. Like, that was just so insane. <laughs> because, like, you know, every other player they had, like Rodney Harrison, Drew Brees, uh, Eric Weddle, they went to do good things somewhere else. They were not very good at keeping talent. Callan Cowherd said they were cheap. The GM was dysfunctional. Even when Eli Manning was drafted by the Chargers in 04. Like, he requested a trade because the GM was so dysfunctional and the Mannings knew that. And Philip Rivers was gone. He just recently left. And I would say he was probably one of the last San Diego Chargers, you know. And 
you know, like a lot of people said, and like even the San Diego fans, like who I listened to had this conspiracy that since the mid 2000s, the Spanos family wanted to move the Chargers to Los Angeles. Because back in 06, and I remember that season well because I was in fifth grade, the Chargers were just very good. They were like 14-2. and two. They lost a divisional round to the Patriots. And Dean Spanos fired Marty Schottenheimer, which I think is such a dumb thing to do. This coach was a very good coach, but you just fire him. And someone said when someone did something good in that organization, they would get rid of them. A part of that quote-unquote conspiracy is they, they wanted them to prove the NFL. It's like, oh... It's not working in San Diego or, oh, we're going to have to stay in San Diego forever because in the 90s, when Alex Spanos was still the owner of the team, the Chargers only went to the Super Bowl once and they got blown out by the 49ers. And some people said they didn't have any business being in that Super Bowl. And, you know, like after the 02 season, Junior Seau left and, you know, like when El, when Lazani and Tomlinson went to the Jets, the Jets had a personal chef, they had personal trainers, all this stuff. But when LT was in San Diego, he had to get that himself. And you know, and the marketing of that team is was poorly marketed because if here outside Philadelphia, like even the shirt I'm wearing, you see Eagle stuff at Dicks and Models, you see Eagle stuff everywhere. Even in like other cities, you see like Packers crap and Colts crap and Cardinals crap and Jaguars crap everywhere. But in San Diego, you barely saw Chargers stuff. And the Chargers were poorly, poorly advertised. And, you know, just like this team sometimes could be very good or very mediocre, like 7 and 9 or 14 and 12 and, excuse me. <clears throat> Or like 2 and 14 or 5 and 11 or something like that. And you know, like they had very good attendance, but it wasn't until like around the mid 2010s where other fans, teams, other fans were starting to move because, you know, uh, excuse me, when other teams' fans were starting to enter the stadium because, you know, San Diego knew that Spanos didn't really want to keep the team there. And the interesting fact about Major C is I'm not keen on taxpayers. Funding these stadiums, you know, because these guys are billionaires. But then again, rich people don't think like us. But, you know, Measure C was designed to fail because, like, a lot of the owners at the time, and I'll get into this in a minute, thought Dean Spanos was going to figure something out with San Diego. And Dean Spanos was like, wait, I have to go back to San Diego? I've been trying to convince these guys that we have to get out of here. Because the reason why I believe Dean Spanos packed their chargers to Los Angeles was because they were so poor in rich person terms and so cheap that they just, they're just going to be a tenant in Crocky land. And you know, Stan Crocky, that kind of looked like, if you've seen that video of them at that press conference and how Spanos was looking and how Crocky was looking, you know, Crocky did not want that dude there at a stadium. He did not want that dude at a stadium. And San Diego fans, I, like, I feel for you. I can understand you not rooting for the team because your ownership puts you through a lot of crap, you know, like the poor marketing, all your player, good players leaving. Even when something did do good within that franchise, they would just bounce and do something great elsewhere like Drew Brees. And it's just so insane. And it's hard to believe, even it's been three years that the Chargers are still the Los Angeles Chargers. I could not ever get used to that. And you know what the, uh, while well, I was going back, I'm sorry if I'm rambling, what the ownership was, you know, it's just so, like, you know, ridiculous, like how, you know, they made that fail. They could not have made it work in San Diego. And San Diego had other problems to deal with, you know. It's like they built, like, Petco Park, like, in 05. And that was tricky probably to do, because in California, if you want to build a new stadium with public money, that's tricky because they pay 13% state tax out there. So that's going to be a challenge. And around the mid-10s, there was a lot of the California, two of the California teams had a challenge with that. And, you know, 2016 was their last season in San Diego. And they opted to have to stay one more year there, but Spanish was like, oh, 
Oscar and I'm going to LA and the NFL wasn't ready for that move. The other owners weren't ready for that move. I believe the Miami Dolphins owner Stephen Ross voted against it. But my thing is, why did Jeffrey Lurie vote against vote for it? As a Philadelphia Eagles fan and as Eagles fan, she should know how much a team and a city means to the community. I can't believe he voted for the Chargers to leave. If I were him, I would have not have allowed that. <laughs> So they were five and eleven in their last season. Measure C failed, and it's been a crap show, man. Because that first season, I was not used to calling them the LA Chargers. Heck, I'm still not used to calling them the LA Chargers. And my friend said he watched one LA Chargers game, and he said like I couldn't watch that, Josiah. I could not watch that. And they were like, I don't remember their record that season, but it was like all the opposing fans, including us Eagles fans, we took over. At Dignity Health Sports Park, formerly known as StubHub Center. And even the marketing there was just so bad. And they had a Welcome to LA rally. And they said they paid fans wearing jerseys. And there were still tags on jerseys. And the PR was bad. And the funny thing was, and this was from the LA Haters Super video. They were freaking booed at a Clipper game. Or Dean Spanos taking a picture with the mascot. And, oh, Lord. And even last year, like, he was just booed, like, at a press, at, like, his own rally before the Chargers went to Mexico and played the Chiefs. And in 2018, they went to the playoffs. I think they were 12-4, and four, but nobody really cared. Like, even the marketing in L.A., like, L.A. didn't want the team because they viewed him as San Diego's team. Shout out to TD Diaries, though, like, Dizzy. Like, he's a diehard fan, and I suggest you watch his channel because that man loves his Chargers. But, you know, the whole, that whole situation was a mess. And that first season, like, you know, they said, like, no one went to their games. It was taken over by opposing fans, including us Eagles fans. Uh, it was just a disaster, and it felt weird. Like, Los Angeles Chargers. They're the Clippers of the NFL, while the Rams were the Lakers. And the funny thing was, around 2017-18, the Rams were building traction. Because in 2016, you gotta forget, like, it was basically the St. Louis Rams in LA, because they had, like, a 2-14 record or something like that. And, you know, it's just so, it was just so crazy, amazing how they made that transformation. I remember back at my sports radio show in college, I said, this doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel right. It still took me a while to get used to. And I think in SoliFi, if they have fans due to this whole pandemic and everything, I don't know if that's going to look any better. I really think the NFL made a mistake. Colin Cowherd said the Chargers to LA doesn't feel right. And even back in the 2017 season when they said they should move back, and I said, like, it's true, they should. It's not working here. The people don't like it. They don't have fans in L.A. I remember last season, like, most football fans in L.A., since football has been gone from Los Angeles for around, like, 21 or 22 years, most people in L.A. are transplants. They're from where I'm from, or they're from, like, other parts of the country, and they root for their home team or root for their own team, and they were, like, you know, Vikings fans that took it over last year, and, um... I tell you, that whole thing was just a big, amazing dumpster fire. And I think it's only going to get worse. And even, like, during the NFL draft, when they did the virtual draft, they barely had any, they, they didn't even have fans there. And the urinating tree said, like, Dean Spanos and his family were, they definitely overestimated it. And the patriarch, Alex Spanos, who at that time, around 17, was had bad health, he died at the age of 95 in 2018. and. You know, Philip Rivers left the Chargers, and they just drafted Justin Herbert. And then honestly, and to end this video, I'm sorry if I was rambling, because I've been waiting to talk about this for years. I think Spano should sell the team, but he's probably going to be too stubborn to sell the team. And I hope the NFL writes this wrong, if possible, and they move back to San Diego. But I highly doubt it, because TD Diary said they got the trademarks in, and they're going to probably be there for 40 years. So, what do I know? Alright, this has been Josiah Blodgett Sports. Sorry if I was a bit rambling, but I had a lot to talk about. Alright, peace.